Hey, Clubbers. Welcome to First Issue Club, the podcast where we review and talk about first issues. Roll that music. Can you do your little line about uh, murky and muddy? <laughs> you, you don't want to do it? I don't actually remember it. It's a... Uh... Welcome to First Issue Club, where we help aid you through the muddy and murky waters of the comic book landscape. Cool. What books do we have, Mike? This week, we're talking about X-Men Black Mojo number one on Marvel, Murder Falcon number one on Image Comics, and What If Peter Parker, the Spider-Man, Became the Punisher number one on Marvel Comics. Whoo! Got a doozy this week. So, uh, if you're not familiar with Mojo, Mojo essentially runs a planet that is one giant reality TV show. He's the uh, star of the X-Men Black by Scott Ackerman that we're covering today. So who do we have in the club today? And if you could create your own reality TV show, what would it be? This is Greg Lichtai, and my reality TV show would be called, uh, See, It's Not Very Fun, Is It? And it's where we find people who love to pull pranks, and then we pull pranks on them, but we, like, destroy some of their... um, property (laughs) and then when they get upset we're just like it was just a joke it was just a joke calm down it was just a joke i would watch the shit out of that because there's nothing worse than getting pranked Hmm. because no one has fun getting pranked (laughs) it's not even really fun to watch uh this is budget king and my reality tv show would be called do me so (laughs) Uh, we're all shaking our heads (laughs) strap in folks (laughs) So the contestants would come on the show, profile them, and we would find somebody very attractive to them. And they, we would say, would you like to do them or would you like to do an extreme sport and afterwards slam a Mountain Dew? You get the choice. Oh, oh I see where the do me comes yeah. from. Yeah. Double do. Do me. So they get the choice. Homonyms. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, so wait. <laughs> Great. Do we get to watch them do it? Like, what's the point there? I think, I was thinking about this, I think 95% of people would choose to do the person that we've selected that's attracted to them, and that happens in just a house. So you just watch the house, and they come out, and they say, we, afterwards you say, how was it? But it, on the off chance they decide to do an extreme sport, like uh-huh. bungee jump or something, I think that's when the show gets really interesting. You say, I've been thinking about this as if you had this great idea all day <laughs> long that you'd just been cooking on. Uh, yeah, well, this is a, outside of this question, this is a reality, I, candidly, I, I seeded the question this week, and I really wanted to pitch you guys on the screen. Is this a, just like a go-to fantasy that you have, of just like, <laughs> going to the USA Network, being like, hey guys, do I have a show for you? It's called Do Me, it's based on a soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Mike D, and my reality show would be called Binge Watch. On this show... People would eat watches, <laughs> and you get ten thousand dollars for every watch that you ate. And so you'd essentially you'd have a bunch of people around you cheering you on, and we'd, you'd just see people like choking down um, timepieces. <laughs> wow! Also, a play on words. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's some certain depth to it because it's also like a waste of time. Oh, you know, t- like isn't TV a waste of time? And it's kind of a commentary there. Yeah. Wow, deep. deep. And our fourth club member. <laughs> I don't have one. I was trying to finish the last book. I was just gonna say, can we leave the <laughs> silence in? <laughs> and our fourth club member. Uh, what about uh, people what, watching you sleep? What about Caitlin thinks about things? <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> Is there any dialogue? <laughs> no, it's just me. The only idea I had was making a reality show about all of the executive producers that of current reality shows and so sort of a- like the see how you like it approach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great call. It's like a meta reality show for reality show makers. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Let's get this podcast started. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and we're having a great time, of course, because we're covering X Men Black number one, Mojo Edition, subtitled Mojo Rising. This book is by Ackerman, Bradshaw, and Orejo. Did you say Ackerman? I did say Ackerman. As in Scott? Yeah, we're predisposed to liking Scott Ackerman. I would consider myself a um, super fan, I guess. <laughs> I hate saying that I'm a super fan of anything because it makes you sound like a fucking nerd. You can just say you're an awk head. Oh, God. Yeah, that's <laughs> worse. You're an, you're an Aki. You're an Acolyte. You're a man boy. <gasps> an Acolyte. <laughs> that's pretty good. I'm Acolyte. a fan of that one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm an Acolyte. Scott Ackerman hosts Comedy Bang Bang. He produces Between Two Ferns, very funny show. Does a whole lot of comedy writing. Uh, Scott Ackerman is a huge Marvel Comics fan, and every once in a while they dip into the obscurity of past characters and story arcs, which is always a fun nugget if you're also a comic book nerd. And it shows here. It he flexes cer- some knowledge. It certainly shows. Yeah. So one of the things that I was going to start out talking about this book by saying was that, God, I'm glad that we went with that intro question because it spared me the tediousness of explaining who Mojo <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that brief background, alien from another planet, always involved in some sort of reality TV stunt. He's classically wrapped the X-Men into all these things and has like very murderous plans. But in this book, we kind of find him having a crisis of identity. He's stuck in New York City. He has still the same plans to murder the X-Men for a ratings grab. Through going out New York, he finds himself entranced by the city, the beautiful women there, meets a friend who makes him think, oh, maybe, maybe what I've been doing isn't right, kind of opens his perspectives. And that's kind of just the general gist of the book. The real conversation here or at least that I found uh, following some of the conversation of this book online this week. I don't know if you guys did it all. This book starts out with a joke about the X-Men rebooting, making new characters that cater to new fans and younger viewers. It seemed And diverse viewers. And diverse viewers, right. A lot of people online didn't take kindly to that or thought that they were going to hate this book given what they'd heard about these opening couple pages and then actually liked it. Any thoughts on that? I feel like we're all pretty much on the same page here with this stuff. (laughs) Did they not just prove his point? Yeah. (laughs) So I I think this book was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And to open up with being like, Mojo's thing is that he's going to get rid of the other X-Men that are for other people besides a mainstream audience (laughs) is so meta. And so like Scott Ackerman just being like, you know what, this is what I'm doing here. You gave me the weirdest fucking villain in X-Men, and I'm going to run with it and fucking murder it. Totally. I love the the whole conversation about that. It kind of came really prominent out of Star Wars, um, the idea of, you know, people ruining a thing you love by making more of it that doesn't live up to your standards. And comic books have been a huge target of those sort of people lately, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what the the foundation of Comics Gate is, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Totally. They hate diversity, and they just mm-hmm. want to go back to the good old days when superheroes drank from different water fountains and women knew their place. <laughs> <laughs> and I think their argument is that the history of these characters, you, they, you have to be, you have to observe it. But if anything evolves... It's Marvel Comics who are publishing 50 different titles. Like, even X-Men alone, I I can't even name how many X-Men series are currently going right now. Yeah, So you being a purist, like, then you have to figure out your certain brand of purity. That you're you're this Marvel purist of whatever fuck thing you like. Uh Uh-huh. Do you think Mojo meeting a hero and kind of being swayed and being like, oh, I didn't know the X-Men were like this. Like, he's actually, like, a pretty cool guy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's further commentary on this, or am I way overthinking the whole thing? It it might be, but it also makes for a great story (laughs) that, like, he's an anti-hero of sorts, so now, like, you really care about following him and his love relationship. Like, I feel like you're kind of right there, Mike, because the, what's the guy's name? Glop? Gloop? The pink guy? Glob. Glob, Glob. Glob is the kind of person that we all want to be. You know, you take the time to kind of explain and engage with someone who's obviously just, like, 
being hateful to be hateful. And he, he kind of turns him into a different person and, like, opens his eyes. Like, that's kind of what we all want to be, at least in the comic book world. Like, I would love to, to sit down with people who are just like, ah, no, no, these new diverse characters really suck. And it's just like, well, actually, they don't suck. And uh, let's have a conversation about it before I just yeah. call you an idiot. I think that's kind of a, a, a funny way to go about it. So if anybody doesn't know, so Mojo is just a blob. And he comes from a p- planet of blob people. And half of the blob people decided to get into these robot things that gave them, like, structure and let them walk around and move. Yeah, I think Wally. Even Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Prequel to Wally, yeah. And so even his face is, like, pulled back by this thing that, like, helps him keep his mouth open and gives his, like, eyes structure. Uh, while the, the rest of the world are, like, purists and they call themselves the spineless. <laughs> and and that's just kind of a such a funny world building backstory thing <laughs> that they've got this animosity towards each other for those who like decided to get an artificial mechanical spine and those who are like purists and are saying like I'm just gonna sit here that's the way it's supposed to be I will remain a blob <laughs> so we're not talking about this comic book much so we're talking about like. Oh, yeah. Great, great mojo backstory. Well, we get a first appearance in this comic book. Oh, we do. So, and I love this too because this is one of those things where you get so many writers and creators like love working in new characters. And it's kind of like an honor to squeeze something in and then have it reused elsewhere. And then first appearances are obviously super sought after by comic book collectors. Like, I love them. I'll go buy all the, you know, different covers of something that. Uh, has a first appearance that might be important. This one is just a guy who spits. He produces a lot of mucus. <laughs> and that's also his X-Men name. His X-Men name is Mucus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, he just spits on X-23. And it immediately doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, a classic uh, comedy Bang Bang character they just make up. Like, I, I produce too much mucus, so now I'm an X-Men. One of the key areas, like, where this joke comes through, or I think Scott Ackerman kind of comes through, is he's saying that he got a a mindless one and a sentinel to uh, combine and attack the X-Men. And he's like, you know, I kept them in a cage and they had sex and they birthed this thing. They did the nasty. Oh, they did the nasty. (laughs) There we go. And uh, Mucus is like, uh, that seems (laughs) impossible. And his response is, well, it is. I personally watched them do it. (laughs) 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 And just like, yes. And I mean, like, what (laughs) deep, obscure pulls that you're going to take, like, the um, the mindless one? one. One of the things that I think that this comic book achieves well is that it's fun to read as, like, a newcomer who doesn't have deep knowledge, but... That's obviously like a treat for Marvel fans here. Yeah. I don't know if you know, well, you guys probably know this, but Sentinels were really risen to prominence because of the X-Men television show that couldn't show especially like violence, but any type of like blood or gore. So like the destruction of Sentinels like kept on happening because they could just rip apart robots. I didn't know that. Yeah, neither did I. Makes sense for I mean, a kid show. Like they just... were, yeah, they were around, but they were way more used in... The television, the television show. show. Yeah. yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. I read this and it was late, and I thought to myself, "This is the comic book that saves the comic book industry." Oh my lord! This is the one. It has so many things, <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't like forget comic book lovers, but it like embraces new comic book people, and it's funny, but it has adventure. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that Marvel knows the gold they have here. Yeah. Um. In this, and it even if you go to explain to somebody, like it, if somebody was like, "What comic books?" Which actually we've gotten this email or we get this question a lot. Like, what new should I pick up? I would put this into my repertoire of telling them, "Check this out." Oh yeah. yeah. But it would be so hard to be like, okay, so actually X-Men has been dividing up into colors <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. for a while. Yeah. And they're somewhat similar stories, but they're also not. And sometimes they cross into each other. And so now okay, there's X-Men Do you have black. 20 minutes? Because yeah. I'm going to yeah. explain to you why you will like this. Yeah. Sit and down, I, let me buy you and coffee. And I know it says one, but there actually is not going to be a second issue of this. <laughs> Scott Ackerman himself said on Twitter, because someone was just like, uh, wrote an article that said, uh, 
Scott Ackerman writes scathing article about comics gate and nerds and new X Men Black. And Scott Ackerman was just like, I don't know if I would say scathing. Like, <laughs> I definitely had fun, but it wasn't like malicious. Like, I think he, I think he's right there. Like, there's nothing like outwardly like mean about it, but it is kind of like tongue in cheek. Hey, we need to loosen up. Yeah, and well, I don't. I, it didn't seem super stabbing to me, but when you think about how uh, small the egos are of the people <laughs> oh my God. who would, like, object to this, yeah. like, that's a problem. Like, those are the sort of people who are exploding. Like, I watched some video reviews of this comic, and there was this one guy wh- who was like, okay, so <laughs> how do I even do this here. And then he reads some of the first page, like, sarcastically. Uh, For too long, the group of mutants I grew up with have been overshadowed by new characters. Oh, that's not the quite right the word. They haven't been overshadowed, okay? (laughs) They've been replaced. Oh, my God. They have been fully replaced, okay? And they are not being honored. And the sniveling fool... Scott Ackerman, who blocked me on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> Wait, are you being serious right now? That, is, that's actually what he said? Yes, it, like almost what? word for word. Hell he said he's yes. calling you an idiot, and he's calling me an idiot. This is an attack on all of us. Go so, fuck yourself. Hmm, like, I'll send you guys the link to this. Yes, but <laughs> and then I'll put it on he Twitter. He is calling you an idiot, but that, it's because you are an idiot. <laughs> and If you get riled up, but I don't, yeah. But I don't, I, like, to some extent, but yeah, to Greg's point, like, I don't think that it was like, a real heavy dig. No. Yeah. And he even kind of goes back and forth, and I could he- it was funny to me because I could hear people saying this all over the place. Like, he's like, you know, I don't really care. I just like the, I just want good stories. And, like, that's what <laughs> I'm mainly concerned about. But, like, layer underneath that, and they really just want the people that they knew and loved to come back, and they don't like the new stuff. And that's Just because you read fine, something guess, but... and read a lot of it doesn't mean it's yours. <laughs> no. Like right. you don't own it. Like it's totally. it's ev- and in fact, there's mi- there's millions of other people that it's also there equally as theirs. If you've ever even seen the word X Men, it's just as much yours as it is that dipshit. Yeah, right. I'm glad that we all sat down today and solved this problem. <laughs> so go ahead and share this episode, and as long as trolls hear our perspective. They will be changed. They will be changed. Buy this book for your friends for a fun romp in X-Men universe. Murder Falcon, dun 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 Murder Falcon, dun 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 on Image Comics. Murder Falcon! Perfect. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's me, Greg. And now we're going to cover Murder Falcon from Image Comics by Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. Murder Falcon follows Jake, a hard rocking, long haired, having dude who plays metal music and plays it almost too well. How well? Well, when he plays his magical guitar, Murder Falcon comes from another, another dimension and helps him fight monsters. <laughs> Why are the monsters here? I don't know. Yes, I do know, actually. Because they explained it in the comic. <laughs> I, I Which, wish this okay. was like the pitch for the, like the guy to the, the creative actual, team. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, do you know? Yes, you know, because I will put it in there. In one panel on page 17. <laughs> yep. There's a king named Magnum Chaos, and he has accrued enough negative tokens from the human world to open his portal to the Earth world, which we live in. I loved that. That's all the explanation that I needed. Boom. Mm-hmm. Thank you. There's a huge bad guy, rift in space, bad guys are here. Yeah. Yep. yep. Guy's, guy's wife died, he needed to pick me up, now he can play guitar and summon Murder Falcon. Yeah, well actually he's still bummed out that his wife's dead. Yeah. Like I feel like this is, obviously is a story about a murderous falcon who helps him destroy monsters, but I think it's also going to be about Jake dealing with grief and the loss De- of his wife. Oh, De- depression. Which, okay, so, yeah. but doesn't that drive metal? Fuck yes, it, it does. Isn't that what metal is all about, is is our sensitive side? That's the secret. All oh, the metalheads don't want you to know. <laughs> if, that, that, if, sensitive if, if that's a secret, you're an idiot, because <laughs> I'm a huge fucking metal fan, and I know that it is nerdy, and that it's like emo, and it's not about being broed out. And all of the other people that like metal, including you, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're a broed out metalhead, I'm calling you out, because you're fucking... You're, yeah, yeah. If you're, you didn't cry at the end of Marley and Me, you don't like metal. <laughs> yeah, come see me in the pit. 
Exactly. I'll you pick know. you up when you fall down. I just got bro. a fucking tattoo of death, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Riding a horse. <laughs> I love that in the back of the end of this book, he like says like metal's about being a nerd. <laughs> like yeah, <there's, laughs> yeah, you can't be cool and like metal. No, because you probably like D and D and comic books and other nerdy shit. Right. Yeah, there's a level of like fantasy and bigness to metal that to in order to buy into that, you have to yeah have some sort of like sci-fi like, fantasy. Yeah, like from the beginning, like things. you first of all you read Tolkien and you go, how do I get this but in a hard rocking form? <laughs> <laughs> you you also like have to have a microphone and scream into it like in front of people that's not like intimidating it just sounds good but it's not like tough no like you know what i mean like tough is like lifting a bunch of weights or punching somebody in the face yeah. or like having a gun i guess <laughs> <laughs> it's not being like Rah! Uh, some would yeah. say having a gun is cowardice. Just screaming your feelings into a microphone. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, so that uh, basically I gave you the full rundown of Murder Falcon. <laughs> this is my Greg Lichtai, my pick of the week. And uh, Matt, when I say pick of the week, you can do a screeching falcon. I, Greg, I think I know why you like this because this is a comic book born from the psyche of Andrew W.K. <laughs> yes, essentially. There's a metal falcon that comes to you to rip you out of your depression, who only says positive things, who helps you fight by playing music. If this, mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing this book needed was him to say party a bunch, and this would be literally <laughs> written by Andrew W.K. <laughs> yeah. There's parts in this book where Jake goes, well, what do we do now? And Murder Falcon goes, drink beer. <laughs> and then the next scene, they're on top of a van drinking I love, beer. I love how Murder Falcon drinks beer, too, because he's got his beak closed. <laughs> Like he's a tiny bird drinking nectar out of a flower. <laughs> one of my fa- <laughs> one of my favorite parts of this book, how all of his buddies in his band are like, "Come on, man, we should like start the band again." And then he's got these really sweet neighbors and neighborhood like people who are just like, "Dude, you fucking rule! Like, start like hammering out some jams again, dude." I'm still listening to your uh, old album. Yeah, they're still yeah. listening to like the old Bruticus album. I think that was the name mm-hmm. of their group. Uh, and he's just like so sensitive and he's just like, I'm too embarrassed to start my band again. I don't, don't want to play guitar. And then the book ends with Murder Falcon saying, man, to really take on some shit, we're going to need to get the band back together. Such a good Bruticus yeah. reunion. <laughs> About damn time. Hell yeah. What are the <laughs> odds that this isn't real? That there are no monsters and there is no Murder, Fal- Murder Falcon. I hate that. I have a real uh, dislike of that as a storyline. I think they are real because you see Same. newspapers written it does saying n- that there's... A- it does nothing to end a story that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It right. was all like, a dream. Oh, it was fake the Used whole to read time. Word Up magazine. The murder falcon was inside you this <laughs> whole time. Okay, so I also love that the <laughs> the nickname for murder falcon is Murph. Yes. Which is mer and f- <laughs> As murder, in falcon. murder and falcon. So <laughs> if you guys didn't get that, mer, <laughs> like first syllable in murder. And then there's this thing where you slam two names together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like, you know, like people say, like, a mash them up. An amalgamation. Brangelina. Oh. oh. Or, so, and I think that a technical term is a portmento. Oh, a portmento. Mm hmm. Uh, to uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, I know you're listening to this. <laughs> I need you to say mutter, m- mutter, mutter. Yep. Need, nope, nope, <laughs> mutter. I need you to say well, motherfucking murder falcon at some point. We loved, it's canon. we loved Moida Falcon. <laughs> Moida Falcon. <laughs> I loved your Moida Falcon comic books. It's too many MFs. It's perfect. MF, MF. It's even on his belt. Mof, if, I, if, so, if you see somebody with the letters MF on their belt, you're not going to assume it stands for murder falcon. You're going to. St- Assume that it stands for motherfucker. Oh, maybe that's true. you should go as Murder Falcon, and I can be Jake for Halloween. <laughs> yes, perfect. And in two weeks, you will be the only people that know <laughs> your reference, but I will know it, and that'll be great. So what do you? I'll be some kind of Weird chicken. <laughs> yeah, you can be mojo. Mojo. I'll be bleeding from my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to Country Buffet and <laughs> get you loaded up on carbs. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you said carbs and my gird was like, that's a safe food. 
<laughs> More mozzarella sticks, please. <laughs> oh, boy. And that was Murder Falcon, Greg Lichtai's Pick of the Week. <laughs> What if Peter Parker was the Punisher? <laughs> oh. boop, 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 Let's keep going on that song. <laughs> hey, what if Peter Parker was the Punisher? He had the same powers as Spider-Man, but now he has guns. Yeah, now he has guns for fighting all the bad people in the world. Guns for fighting all the bad people in the world. The vocal melody of that was sincerely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Was. I like really liked it, to be honest. It gave me some sort of ASMR vibes. Like my I'm my brain is tickled. <laughs> mm. Next up we got What if Peter Parker became the Punisher? And if you're not familiar, Marvel does a series called What If, which frankly is pretty brilliant. They're almost all one-offs, and they allow the Marvel Universe to do weird mix-em-ups, kind of crazy shit. Some famous things that they've done is uh, give the Thor hammer to somebody, make the Avengers fight in the 1950s, uh, they like to revive characters, uh, I think they made Gwen not die in one area, all that kind of stuff. Fans love them, uh, non-fans probably get confused because it gets real meta, but this new series of What If uh, is trying to do some straight down the road mix em ups. And here we got Peter Parker, the Spider Man, becoming the Punisher. And let me tell you, it's the same fucking story <laughs> as Spider Man, except for he shoots some people. It's Shared the- gripe. Completely. I was just like, "What? I hate reading the first ten pages of this because I know exactly what's happening already. This could have been done in a page." He even he's also dressed <laughs> as Spider Man with a with a skull o- over his shirt. And I don't even. I, that, that's what this comic book was about. It was to like. It was all this like porn of like or like this like, this fetishization of like we could put a skull on Spider Man's outfit. I guess. These- also, he he was the pre Punisher. It wasn't even. He gives it up, and then... He ruins not... Frank Castle's origin. The story ends with Frank Castle becoming the Punisher yeah. the same way Frank Castle already became the Punisher. Yeah. Well, actually, no. Well, his family mean, still no? dies. Yeah, but the reason his family dies is different. Yeah. They're still collateral... Well, I mean, they're collateral damage in so this one. It, so in this book... It's not because of Frank him. Castle's family dies because of Peter Parker. And then, but in the in fr, uh, the Punisher series, his family dies because the army wants to prove a point to him that you're not invincible. Well, the last panel is the same, regardless. Totally, it's still yeah. in it. It didn't it, even need to be a what if. No, <laughs> it didn't. nothing but changed. <laughs> yeah, the only here's the thing that ultimately happened is Gwen Stacy is still alive. Yes. So if. Spider-Man was fine with killing people, which I'll say that I enjoyed the perspective that some villains, like, let's just fucking kill them. Sure. <laughs> like, sure. Why, why do you need to be, like, the do-gooder, always uh, give someone another chance sort of guy when the Green Goblin has killed people, like, hundreds of times? Here is the problem, though, with this comic. <clears throat> when you see this cover... And I'm going to get into his technology later. But when you see this cover, you assume he's going to shoot metal into people and blow them away and kill them. We get a bunch of people that he says he killed, but there is no bloodshed in this whole entire comic. How is he the Punisher and just, like, there's this whole panel where he explains that he killed these people, including Doc Ock, but Doc Ock needs a bullet in his fucking head with blood coming out. That's what the Punisher would do. Yeah, it's more of theater of the mind. That's not that's not uh, respectful of what a comic book does. Comic books, if you guys aren't familiar, uses <laughs> pictures to tell stories, not words. So oh. <laughs> this kind of raises a point that um, someone shared with me on the whole Batman penis thing. That there are certain characters that are so so popular that the publishers are very hesitant to do certain sort of things in anything that even remotely revol- involves those characters. So okay. if Spider-Man shows up, even in a Punisher book, if you put him on the cover, there's a chance that some kid's going to grab, you know, this Punisher book, looking for a Spider-Man story and see, like, blood everywhere. 
And I heard the same sort of thing about like Batman. But it was like not it's, it's meant for mature readers that like new black label they were doing. Sure. Yeah. But you're taking one of the most popular made up characters on Earth and showing us his penis. And then there's also um, the family of a person who created this character. And DC Comics kind of like answers to that. Fa- they put that family's name in like the front of all the comics with uh, Batman in them, like used like thanks to like the King family or whatever it is. Bob Kane. Bob Kane. That's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. They're just like there's a certain level of like respect that we like to show, like the families of the people who created the characters, stuff like that. So you're saying the Spider-Man book can't have him murdering people with guns. Well, right. I think it, they tied their hands deciding to make it Peter Parker becoming the Punisher. Because why write that? Why make that the what-if scenario if you can't do it? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because you think it looks cool to put a skull on Peter Parker, <laughs> on Spider-Man's <laughs> outfit. I mean, really, that's the crux of this. I think I would have liked this more if Peter Parker had never become Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Like, what if he hadn't become Spider-Man and then Uncle Ben dies the way Uncle Ben dies? And then that turns a uh, science nerd into the Punisher instead of turning yeah. a Marine into the Punisher. Yeah. Like, that's a little more interesting, right? Essentially. I, I like what-ifs a lot. Diabolical and I think that they're, they're a really fun thing that does this. There's a, a what-if where what if Peter Parker never became a superhero? And that one's great. Yeah. He gets a desk job. He's like a mailman or something? <laughs> he becomes like a business guy. <laughs> does he still have, like... <laughs> uh, he wears his costume, yeah. <laughs> He just cosplays at work every this day. Is like really sad. Can but we? I think we can all agree that this Punisher What If is stink of the week. <laughs> stink of the week. No, oh, no. I don't want to do that. Someone put a month worth of work into this. No, I know we can't do that. <laughs> and thank you for making comic books. Thank you, Mr. Potts. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Potts, for making a story for me. To read for with my friends. <laughs> yep, just just because we complimented one song doesn't mean you guys get to just sing, <laughs> sing the rest of the episode. That's what you get when you compliment me. Should we do a musical episode? <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <gasps> I am should. into that. I, oh, I'm supportive of you. And a little tease for our audience friends. Halloween issue coming up in about two weeks. Ooh, Second spooky. annual. The return of uh, Podcast Demon. Yeah, I cannot wait. Yeah, we'll have to get the Ouija board out for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Devil shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, take the podcast demon. We on some <laughs> devil shit. Did I tell you guys about that? One in Cleveland? We were at a, a club, and at the end of it, people had umbrellas. People I came with had umbrellas, and this lady comes in, and she's sharing the umbrellas with us. And I was kind of, I was just done being at a club, because why would you ever want to be at a club? But I was just hanging out, and I was like, hey, you into devil shit? And she goes, oh, you're like my sister. And I was like, what? So I go, hey, don't fuck the devil, because the devil fuck you. And he goes, and she goes, oh, you're exactly like Allison. And I was like, dear God, I need to meet this person. (laughs) (laughs) I like how she also says her sister's name, like, you know, oh, Allison? Yeah. 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 She comes to our meetings. Yeah. Oh, you're in the devil club with Allison? So... Oh, yeah. Okay. Tell Allison I said, hey. Yeah. All right. You guys buy both of your choker uh, pentagram necklaces from the Are you guys excited store? for Charm? Charm <laughs> to come out? Oh, God. I think the I think the Lord kept uh, BK and Allison apart on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so the demon child that they would have bore. <laughs> Thank you for KCUR 893 Studios. Thank you for Matt Hodap for being our ever present producer thank you so much uh primary color music for doing our theme music and thank you and much appreciation go check out the fountain city family of podcasts frequency sorry founts sorry and go check out the (laughs) fountain city frequency family of podcasts uh find us on twitter facebook instagram linkedin they finally approved us we are a certified linkedin member uh we worked at uh, home depot No. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> we are still the best podcast in Kansas City. They didn't take it back. Yeah, we have that, we have that title for a whole year. Yeah. So we can only be challenged next year. This, this is Greg Licktie <laughs> signing off. 
This is Budget King. I'm actually going to do a serious thing here. We don't go back into other books that have been really good, but I think if there's a couple books that you want to keep on checking out, I've been loving Iceman, Outpost Zero, Border Town. Uh, I don't know. This is your f- thing. Farmhand. We, I can say we. Uh, what other like stuff have you guys been picking up that's outside of the number ones that you're excited to keep, that the stories keep on going? Sleepless. Sleepless, Sleepless has been pretty yes. good. Uh, yes, yes. Cosmic Ghost Rider. Oh, beautiful. Unnatural. New World. Is that yeah. New lovely? World? Yep. Yeah. New World has been good. You didn't have any, Mike? I know you read. Uh, I'm my name is Mike DeStacy, and I don't do this very often. But I wanted to call back to some TV shows that I've been <laughs> watching and liking. So Big Mouth came out back on Netflix, and the second season of that's been pretty funny so far. Um, Ozark, I just never got around to watching Ozark, and that's actually a pretty good show. So, you know, I I kept going through the first episode of that. Um, If you've ever seen um, Saturday Night Live, like, maybe you didn't like last season, but I think there's some cool new cast members, and I think that's probably worth giving another shot. It's been the first couple episodes have been interesting, and there's been a lot of social conversations surrounding that. Um, So, bye. Thanks for simultaneously making fun of me, but also you dipped into serious. <laughs> you showed a little yourself. I already said bye. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's left the building. It's true. Hey, My yeah. favorite show came back. The 10 o'clock news. <laughs> it always comes back. I know. Swish. <laughs> it's the longest running television show. That's good, actually. 10 yeah. o'clock news. Yeah. My favorite website's still running, Wikipedia. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Still up and running, yeah. You guys have a favorite website? Google. Google. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have a favorite website. <laughs> and that's been the first issue called Goodbye. <laughs> Wait, no, someone has to sign off still. I'm Caitlin Morosic, and I will show myself out. Bye. Bye.